story appears ordinary until you see the core side of it. And what you're looking for is a story behind the news. We bring it to you from Lagos, the commercial capital of Nigeria. Giving you all sides and political stories round the clock. Every detail from the start line to the final whistle. Core TV News, expanding your view. Hello, good evening, and thank you for joining us on the Core TV News uh, Prime Time. I am Frank Omalape. Our top stories tonight. The Independent National Election Commission insists on the use of card readers for the governorship and House of Assembly votes. Expels the deputy governor of Jigawa State over alleged anti party activities. And fire outbreak gusty between the local government office of Heineck in Igbo State. And outside Nigeria, Yemeni conflict continues as logistic problems hamper aid flights to refugees. Thank you for joining us tonight. The Independent National Election Commission has declared that card readers will be used for the April 11 election across the country. This, according to the commission, is in line with guidelines for the 2015 general elections. Annex said in a statement issued by Secretary Augusta Ogaku that the guidelines were clear on what to do if a card reader fails and cannot be replaced within a specified time frame. It had the that it only relaxed the guidelines for the presidential and national assembly elections. The commission also assured Nigerians that it has reviewed the operation of the card reader in the March 28 elections, identified the challenges and has taken adequate measures to address them. And how the All Progressive Congress in River State has expressed surprise that the committee set up by the chairman of the Independent National Election Commission, Atahiru Jega, to investigate the conduct of the presidential and national assembly elections and the state failed to meet with it. The APC had complained to ANEC over alleged disenfranchisement of its supporters and manipulation of the results of the March 28, 2015 elections in the state. The state chairman of the APC, Davis Ikaya, reveals that the committee set up by Ajeka only met with INEC and the People's Democratic Party in the state, who were supposed to be offenders in the matter. Ikaya queried in the rationale behind Jega's claim that a committee was set up to investigate complaints over the non-conduct of elections in the state when the said committee had not been able to meet with the party that laid the complaint. The state APC chairman recalled that political parties in Rivers had unanimously declared that the purported election was a mockery of democracy because, according to them, the PDP, in concert with REC, merged the entire process with high momentum of irregularities, malpractices, and killings. He also stated his observation of the challenges. John A. Tui, if it were a coalition officer for River State experience in the course of representing the concocted result, was a case of a man battling with his conscience to read what he did not write and what he knew was not true. And our former head of state, Yakubu Gowon, said the peaceful conduct of March 28 presidential pool won by Mohammed Buhari of All Progressive Congress has shamed Jim Sayer's perception that Nigeria will break up in 2015 while recalling the prediction that the country will disintegrate in 2015. Gowon declared that those that made the prediction did not reckon with Nigeria's ability to solve its own problems. The former head of state expressed his happiness that the polls were judged free and fair by local and international observers 
and commended the patience and resilience of voters who defied rain and scourging sun to cast their vote. Gowana also commended INEC officials, especially the NYSC members, for insisting on doing the right thing and urged Nigerians to keep that spirit so that democratic governance will mature in the country. The All Progressive Congress has accused the People's Democratic Party of launching a series of attacks on its supporters in the run-up to the April 11 governorship election and a House's of Assembly in River State. It also claimed that security agencies have been colluding with PDP and the state to intimidate its members. APC spokesman La Mohammed said at a news conference in Abuja that at least one of its members was shot dead at the weekend. The consequently once local and international observer monitoring team and the forthcoming election to pay close attention to security agencies and INEC officials in River State. The violence targeted at APC members in Rivers, especially during the last elections, was carried out in full in full glare and in most cases with the connivance of INEC officials in the state. Of course, it is needless to say that the collusion of INEC with the PDP and the police to pave the way for unbridled violence against APC members and supporters and the subsequent rigging of the elections was spearheaded by the resident electoral commissioner for the rivers, Ms. Jessila Khan. This issue is already the subject of a very strong petition which our party has written to the chairman of the Independent Electoral Commission in Abuja. The All Progressive Congress in Oyo State has won former state governor Rashid Ladoja to desist from his alleged sponsorship of falsehood against the administration of the incumbent governor Abiola Jimobi. The party claimed that Ladoja, the state or court party governorship candidate in the April 11 poll, was allegedly doing so in a bid to mislead the electorate and get their sympathy votes on Saturday. It fingered Ladoja in the spread of various rumors making the rounds in the state which were apparently designed to set the resident of the state against Ajimobi, who is seeking a second term in office. In a statement in Ibado by the Director of Publicity and Strategy, Olawale Shadari, the APC says it will force Ladoja into retirement from politics by denying him or him sponsored candidate any victory at the poll on Saturday. Contrary to the claims, he noted that Ajima Bay had improved in lots of teachers and civil servants in the state more than any of his predecessors. The party said the party's governorship candidate appreciated the fact that those who have spent 15 years and above possess the required experience to promote and sustain quality education and train younger ones in service. And as Nigeria look forward to another round of election this weekend, politicians across party divides are leaving no stone unturned in their quest for victory. The APC insists the governorship and House of Assembly elections is of top priority to party claiming its success at presidential poll can get absolute meaning only if the party record any most success at the April 11 polls. Rashid Rashid speak with some APC stores across state and file in this report. As Nigerians still celebrate Easter, trust politicians' holidays seems over if there was any as they prepare for Saturday's elections, this time putting final touches to their campaigns. For Abdul Fattah Ahmed, Kwara State Governor, he thanked Nigerians for effecting change last Saturday, but also canvassed for votes as he seeks re-election this Saturday. And for us, it's a very good development for us as a party and most importantly for us as a country because it is telling us that um, we are truly imbibing the global uh, direction for ensuring that um, good governance starts with a credible electoral process and this has shown that Nigeria is truly moving towards the direction of um, improving the system of governance and making the lives of Nigerians better. But most importantly here, it tells us that for the first time, Nigerians can take their destinies in their hands. 
and decide what they want that is good for them. In National State, where there will be no governorship election, the battle may still be as hot up as the last poll. The National Assembly members in Osho State, who won seats at last Saturday's poll, expressed optimism, saying lawmaking will no longer be business as usual in the coming administration of Muhammad Buhari. Now that you know our economy is you know based on crude oil. Maybe you will now sit down and see how to diversify a bit to some other where we can get more revenue to show up the whatever we have from the crude oil. But I know it's, it won't be easy. And Nigerian, you know, Nigerian, we, we, we will still need to endure with worry like one, two years before we can start, you know, start getting things right. One, he may not know the extent of the damage now until when they get to that office. So you, you may just think maybe the damage is at 50-60% level, or getting there you now realize that it's at 80-90% level. And you know, for such a person you need to go back to the drawing board and re-strategize. So it's not, a, it's not an easy task at all. As Nigerians enter to another election week, political observers note with interest the surprise which may accompany the Saturday's poll. Rashid Rashid, Paul TV News. Deputy Governor of Yigawa, Ahmadu Mahmoud, has been expelled from the People's Democratic Party for alleged anti-party activities, which was contained in a statement by the PDP chairman of Galagama Ward in Gwema Jigawa, Ibrahim Kafi, Kafinta in Duse. The chairman said the decision to expel Mahmoud was taken during a stakeholders meeting held in his word. Report had earlier indicated that Mahmoud has dumped the PDP for the Unprogressive Congress which won the March 28 election in the state. Kafinta did not say when the stakeholders' meeting, which ratified the expulsion, was held. The ward chairman alleged that the deputy governor sabotaged PDP during the recent National Assembly election. He added that the Gumeo local government area headquarters of the party had endorsed the expulsion. The deputy governor is yet to respond to his alleged expulsion from the PDP. A chieftain of the People's Democratic Party in Lagos State, Chief Ibrahim Babatunde Olorun-Guteiti, on Monday described the PDP governorship candidate in Lagos State, Jimmy Agbaje, as a charismatic leader with a strong moral belief of how things should be done. He also says Jimmy Agbaje is a perfect person for the governorship job and will make the difference in the politics and development of the state. Olorogun Eti, who spoke in Lagos Island, urged the electorate to accept Agbaje based on his antecedent and track record. He warned those working against Agbaje urging traditional rulers, politicians, women and youth in the state to support the gubernatorial ambition of the PDP candidate. Olorogun Eti says Agbaje will uphold the values of communal harmony that makes Lagos State a unique model for us all and also creates the enabling environment for investors within and outside to invest in Lagos State in order to create more job opportunities for the people. All in all, he praised Agbadian and said he's looking forward to his leadership in the state come May 29, 2015. You're still watching Court TV Primetime News. After the break, we'll bring you details of the reaction of the Oba of Lagos to alleged threats to Igbos in Lagos State. Stay with us after the short break. Legotions. Thank you for voting the All Progressives Congress APC and for our victory in the presidential election. But there's still more work to do. To continue to enjoy the ongoing regeneration that started almost 16 years ago in Lagos State, vote for Akiwumi Ambode as governor and APC candidates for the Lagos State House of Assembly. The APC government in Lagos State will continue to provide good roads and infrastructure, transportation, healthcare, education, housing, electricity, employment, markets, clean environment, security, and much more. Lagosians, let's consolidate on our collective achievement and keep Lagos working. This is not the time to experiment. Akinwumi Ambode has over 27 years' experience as a public administrator and is the man for the job. On Saturday, 11th April 2015, come out en masse and vote APC. Support continuity of excellence. Vote Akinwumi Ambode for Governor of Lagos State. Vote APC.
This is Court TV Primetime News Live from our Lagos studio. If you just joined us, a quick reminder of our top stories. The Independent National Election Commission insists on the use of card readers from the governorship and House of Assembly polls. Also, the People's Democratic Party expels the deputy governor of Chikawa State over alleged anti-party activities. And fire outbreak guts the Ipetoli local government office of INEC in Imo State. You can also interact with us on our social media platforms like our Facebook page. It's facebook.com forward slash Court TV News. You can also follow at Court TV News on G. And for live streaming, log on to youtube.com forward slash Court TV. Give you space the news. And now Israel has expressed a willingness to assist Nigeria in the fight against corruption terrorism and in the development of agriculture sector. This was the force of the congratulatory letter signed by President Reuven Rivlin and delivered to the President-elect Mohammed Buhari on Monday in Abuja. The Israeli leader noted that the two countries face similar dangers and challenges in their daily struggle against those who want to terrorize the sitting area. He added that the latest news regarding the Boko Haram ISIS alliance underscores the need for like-minded countries to unite in the fight against radical terrorist organizations. In his response, General Buhari expressed his warm appreciation of the Israeli gesture and pledged to work with all countries on mutual benefits. A congratulatory letter was delivered by that Israeli ambassador to Nigeria or a party. And now, Oba of Lagos, Rewan Akilu, has denied newspaper reports about his alleged threat to Igbos in Lagos to vote for our progressive Congress governorship candidate in Lagos State, Akil Miambode. The Oba, in a statement signed by his media on behalf of Latif Ajose, the Okpaulua of Lagos, said the meeting he had with his and Igbos in the whole of Lagos just the normal one that is held regularly. He added that he also prayed for the continued peaceful coexistence and prosperity of Lagos. The monarch added that his alleged statement on the issue of people ending up in the lagoon is nothing but a storm in a teacup. He said that the statement is just a proverb on those working against their fraud and interests ending up in the Lagos lagoon, as is the tradition of Lagos. And our Director of Media and Publicity of the People's Democratic Party Presidential Campaign Organization, Femi Fani Kaldi, has described as ominous and unacceptable the threat by the Oba of Lagos against the Igbos in Lagos that if they do not vote for the APC, the governorship elections on Saturday, Fani Kaldi, in a statement issued in Abuja, said the truth is that they were threatened with ethnic cleansing and religious carnage in the north which had Buhari not won the presidential election on March 28th and had President Jonathan not quickly considered defeat. Fanny Kaude stated that the threat by the APC and all the attendant rubbish that goes with them must stop pointing out that no one is intimidated on the side of the PDP and neither do party fear for the future because God is in control. He added that the party wants peace and harmony but will not tolerate any attempt to intimidate its followers while urging all PDP supporters nationwide to take their destinies into their hands and vote for the party's candidate. He also reminded the APC that the PDP has over 12 million foot soldiers who must be respected. And now with the governorship and House of Assembly election just a few days away in an Igbo group under the auspices of Progressive Igbo People's Forum in Lagos has endorsed the candidate of APC governorship Akiwumi Ambodi and two House of Assembly as parent. President Ajiboye was there and filing this report. The group, which is an amalgamation of Igbo groups in Surulere, Itirai Kate, and Mushi, and comprises other subgroups, say 
they have decided to pitch their tent with the APC and its governorship candidate in Lagos, as well as House of Assembly representatives from Mushi and Suriliri. A decision to join the party at the center following the decision made by the electorate at the presidential polls. One of the coordinators of the group, Ifanyi Ezeudu, says the Igbos may have erred in the last election, but added that there will not be a repeat of such during the governorship and House of Assembly polls. We know there is some mistakes sometimes. We have learned our lessons and we have made that correction. That's why the honorable members are here today to address them. The party's publicity secretary in Lagos, Joe Ibukwe, says the Igbos have realized that power now belongs in the APC-led center and as such will vote for the APC. Lagos has 20 local governments and 37 LCDAs that are not recognized. That's why this place is like this. When you get 20 money for 20 local governments, you can, they share it among the 57. They can't get enough to do this road. So we want the federal government, which we now control, to recognize the 37 and put it in the constitution. An APC member, Obiageli Onu, says Ambade is the more preferred candidate than PDP's Jimmy Agbaje. We have checked uh, his opponent, which is Agbaje, and we found out that when you put two of them on the scale, uh, you see that uh, Ambade is the right man. He's the man for the job. And the Igbos is solidly behind him. And we are going to give him our support all the way from all the local governments. The season for endorsement is still very much around. But just as has been done at the March 28th presidential polls, only the electorate will decide whose endorsement stays valid. Patience Ajiboye, Core TV News, Lagos. And now just a few days away to Saturday's poll, the INA coffees in Mbitolu local government area of Imo State has been consumed by fire, which according to the police was a, as a result of negligence. Our correspondent Ajibade Ahofesov has details. Well, we'll bring you that report in our subsequent bulletins. Some supporters of the People's Democratic Party in Ekiti State have been prevented by the police from invading the State House of Assembly complex. The PDP loyalists who claim to be on campaign were led by top government officials, including Deputy Governor Kolakpo Lushola and a former Speaker Tuji Odeemi. Our correspondent Rashid Rashid has details. Another twist to the ongoing political drama in Ekiti State has developed with members of the People's Democratic Party in Ekiti State, laying siege to the State House of Assembly complex in a bid to prevent any move that may lead to the alleged moves to impeach the State Governor, Ayodele Fayoshi. The party members who stormed the Assembly complex in their numbers set up canopies as shelter. A former acting governor and chieftain of the PDP, Tunji Odeyemi, justified the decision of the party to campaign anywhere they want to. Connection, there is no connection. Any, any venue could be chosen. Remember when the wife of Mr. President came around, we identified the governor's office and that was where we uh, used to, to welcome the wife of the president. Any venue could be used, any venue, any venue at all as far as the state is within the state for political activity. Every day is uh, Christmas, every day is business and uh, as we can see people gather the hair this morning, they are PDP family. Not buying the campaign excuse, the police led by the state commissioner Taiwola Kanu arrived the assembly and dispersed the crowd while policemen took over the complex with assurance of safety of lives and property. Well, there's no doubt about it that we have security situation at hand and you could see that we are on ground. We got the information this morning, men were deployed here and uh, so far so good. We have succeeded in pushing them back and we are, we are in control. So. I would just um, advise uh, the residents and citizens that there won't be any problem. We are on top of it. It's a political situation, really, but we try our best to curtail any uh, unwholesome incident. Lakanu reaffirmed the command's readiness to ensure peace in the state. The palpable tension in the state house of assembly has gone up a notch since the reemergence of the 19 APC lawmakers last week. Rashid Rashid, or TV News. Adoe Kitty. 
At least 30 people have been reportedly killed by suspected members of the Boko Haram militant in Kwajafa town of Borno State in the northeast Nigeria. Residents say the suspected members of the Boko Haram terrorist group stormed Kwajafa town between 8 and 9 p.m. on Sunday and assembled residents with intention of preaching their ideologies on its start shooting sporadically at the innocent people. An eyewitness who requested not to be mentioned said the suspected terrorists numbering a little above 30 told the government that they will continue to attack and kill people before Buhari will assume leadership to commence total war on the Boko Haram. He also said many of the victims who sustained injuries were rushed to the BU General Hospital for medical attention. Hospital sources said over 30 people were brought to the hospital for treatment after the Kwajafar attack, but most of them have been discharged. The source said most of those injured sustained dislocations and minor injuries in the process of running for their lives during the attack. Sunday's attack was the second attack carried out by the dreaded Islamists. The Boko Haram sings the declaration of Muhammad Buhari as the winner of presidential elect on, on election held on March 28. The said members had on Saturday killed two people in Kamla village of Konduga, local government area, also in Borno State. It is the last day of the Easter celebrations. Lagos residents who migrated uh, spent the holidays with loved ones and family, flood the parks as they returned to their locations. A correspondent patient Sajibui visited the motor park in Lagos and now reports. With a temporary shutdown of business activities, a break from Lagos' usual hustle and bustle, and a close down of some institutions for Easter, Lagos is sure experiencing some breath of fresh air. However, as the celebrations get to a close and people who have traveled begin to return to their locations, they say transportation fare has been inflated. Little change, little change of transport fare due to the celebration on ground. Higher, as a little, little higher. Before normally, beneath two thousand one, especially this uh, non AC is one five fifty. But now it's two five fifty. So due to the celebration on ground, this is the celebration. There are passengers now. It's not that there's, there's no passenger now. Just uh, it's it's not really moving the way it should. Tifa is 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 expensive. Cause when I was coming from Ife, I boarded the bus for 800, and now I'm going back for 1,350. Whereas, this transporter has said the fares remain the same since there's no increase in the price of fuel. Like like normal price, not going like B. Ah, they don't know, but normal price not like B. Ah, for ah, for ah, the if you want to assist, I'm going to go to one to one law. I will not watch him. Whether or not transportation fares have been increased, people still have to return to where they have come from as business resumes fully tomorrow. Patience Ajiboye, Core TV News, Lagos. And now attaining the golden age in life is a great feat everyone looks forward to and is worthy of celebration. This was what brought together friends and family of the Lagos State First Lady Dame Abimbola Fashola and a private dinner to celebrate her 50th birthday anniversary in Lagos. Outlining her qualities, Lagos State Governor Babatunde Fashola credited to her perseverance and endurance the strength of their 21-year-old marriage. In response, the celebrants appreciated all who made her date special with overwhelming joy. She has kept her head above the water. She has been a tower of strength. She has been a very good friend, mother and sister. Different homes, different homes have different rules. And they have different knots that bind them. I don't sing love songs for my wife. But that song resonates. And I don't need love songs for her to know how deeply I care about her. So if you don't mind, give me a J. Yay.
Give me an E. Give me an S. Give me a U. Give me another S. What does it say? For accepting me for who I am, for walking this journey with me, for supporting me with prayers, for supporting me with the emotional and physical assistance and encouragement that I needed and that I still need. And I just pray that our Lord in his infinite mercy would bless each and every one of you, will abide with you, will keep your homes, will give you this joy that you have given me this evening. And um, everything good, our Lord will never deny you. And to my wonderful sisters who have done this, a shame to them. It's also a celebration of love and that of achievement as well. We can say congratulations again. And this is Court TV Primetime News. After the break, we'll bring you business, sport, and stories outside Nigeria. Stay with us. Fellow Lagosian, I bring you Easter greeting. In the spirit of the season, I salute you all for the sacrifices we made in the last election to strengthen our democracy. The outcome of that election has shown that Lagosians must consolidate on our collective achievements and keep Lagos working. Let us work together to take Lagos to greater heights. Happy Easter to you all. On Saturday, 11th April 2015, come out en masse and vote APC. Support continuity of excellence. Vote Akinumi Ambode for Governor of Lagos State. Vote APC. Business now, Director General of the Nigerian Civil Aviation Authority of Nigeria, Muktai Yutsman, has said the Mutala Mohammed International Airport, Lagos, and the Namdi Aziko International Airport in Abuja will soon be certified by the agency. Disclosing this development to Newsman during an interactive section, Yutsman pointed that work at the two international airports were advanced stages. And adding, as soon as the work were completed, the airport will be commissioned. He further noted that the agency is adequately preparing for the Universal Safety Assessment Audit in June by the International Civil Aviation Organization. He also disclosed that on the allegation that NCAA dismissed 187 workers last year, which were yet to be recalled by the agency, was being looked into in 16 that the federal government has set up a committee to look into the matter, adding that whatever decision reached by the government will be binding on the agency. Operators in the capital market have renewed their call for local investors, especially retail ones, to accept capital using the Collective Investment Scheme, CIS, as an option. They note that leveraging the Collective Investment Scheme will be reducing the level of exposure to risk and ensure that their investment is being managed professionally. According to the group, Chief Executive Officer Lua Tony Sani, investing through fund managers remain a better option for rental retail investors because the fund managers are better placed to maximize investment opportunity the way an individual investor cannot. Now, the Securities and Exchange Commission, SEC, has released six new rules to the capital market, one of which is rule on trading in unlisted securities quoted on the Nigerian Stock Exchange. The unlisted security seeks to ensure that all securities of unlisted 
public companies are treated within securities exchanges that are registered with the Commission. Under Section 313, Subsection 1 of the Investment and Security Act 27, the Securities and Exchange Commission is in part to make rules and regulate for effective regulation of the Nigerian capital market. In addition to the rule on trading on listed securities, other new rules that were recently published by the SEC, a code of conduct for participating agencies, code of conduct for underwriters as well. And in sports now, NFL President Amadou Penik and General Secretary Mohamed Sanusi have arrived in Cairo for the 37th Ordinary General Assembly of the Confederation of African Football taking place from Tuesday. On the margin of the General Assembly, the draws for the 2015 African Beach Soccer Championship and the qualification series for the 2016 African Nations Championship were held at the CAF headquarters on Sunday. On Wednesday, there will be a meeting on the CAF Executive Committee to be followed by the naming of the host country for the 2017 Africa Cup of Nations finals, as well as to draw for the qualification series for that competition. Algeria, which hosted and won the tournament in 1990, and Ghana hosted 1963, 1978, and 2000 and 8, and co hosted in 2000 are the front runners alongside Gabon, which co hosted with Equatorial Guinea in 2012. And our FIFA presidential candidate, Prince Ali bin Al Hussein, demanded immediate change in the organization of soccer's governing body as he issued his manifesto on Monday. The Jordanian royal is one of the three men who will change, challenge incumbents of Blatter in the election on May 29. The others are former Portugal midfielder Luis Figo and Dutch FA president Michael van Praag. In his manifesto entitled A FIFA Worthy of the World's Game, Prince Ali pledges to transform the organization's reputation and guarantee development. His manifesto also put an emphasis on transparency, more consultation and increased effort in tackling match fixing and racism. And now Turkey's Sub League and Domestic Cup matches have been suspended for one week after the Fenerbahce team bus was shot at by a gunman on Saturday. The Turkish Football Federation announced the decision after a meeting with the sports minister on Monday. Champions Fenerbahce were travelling to Transborn Airport following their 5-1 victory over Race Sport when the shooting happened. The driver was taken to hospital but no players were injured in the attack. And in tennis now, Andy Murray says he is going to analyse which he has struggled against Novak Djokovic following his latest loss to the Serb in the Miami Open final. World number one Djokovic has an 18 to eight record against the 27-year-old Scott and has won the latest last seven meetings, including the Australian Open final. Murray was beaten 7-6, 7-3, 4-6, in hot and humid conditions as Djokovic collected his fifth Miami title. Murray also lost to the 27-year-old in the Indian Wells final two weeks ago, but said his performance on Sunday was an improvement. And outside Algeria now, eight flights to Yemen are being held back by logistical problems as violence in the country continues. Saudi airstrike have been targeting Houthi rebels for almost two weeks now. The International Committee of the Red Cross was given permission to land planes carrying staff and medical supplies by a Saudi-led coalition on Saturday. But the flight have been unable to depart according to ICRC spokeswoman Claire Fergali. The UN says more than 500 people have been killed as the Houthis battle forces lawyer to Belagua President Abdrabu Mansour Hadi. The Red Cross is also trying to deploy a team of surgeons to the battle turned city of Erdin, but says that authorization from all the parties involved were necessary before this could happen. And France's military says a Dutch hostage. A kidnap in Mali in 2011 has been rescued in a special forces operation. The military said the rescue of yeah, Sajak Wichke took place at 5 a.m. Monday in far northern Mali and that several militants were captured. 
Some 3,000 French forces had taken part in the mission to stabilize Mali, which was overrun by the Al Qaeda linked Islamic extremists until French troops came to the aid of Malam soldiers. Just before we go tonight, a recap of our major headline. We told you that the Independent National Electoral Commission insists on the use of card readers for the governorship and houses of assembly polls. We also told you that the People's Democratic Party expels the Deputy Governor of Jigawa State over alleged anti-party activities. Finally, fire outbreak gas the Imbatoli local government office of INEC in Imo State. And that's it on Court TV Primetime News tonight. Many thanks for watching. On behalf of our entire news crew, I am Frank Omalape. Have a good night, rest.